So hello and welcome everybody to a new edition of the Food Factory First student competition, international student competition that is, as Catherine already mentioned, we're all quite over, literally over the world, all around the world. Uh, the topic of this edition is upscale or downscale a food supply chain to a national or regional level. My name is Christoph Knöbel. I'm a project assistant at the Iseki Food Association. And as Catherine mentioned, together with Catherine and Luminita, we will guide you through this competition. Some of you already know us, also just mentioned, for all of you who are new, welcome. I think we also have some of the, the mentors here. I'm not quite sure. I didn't have the time to, to check the, the full participation list, participants list, but we also do have some of the mentors. So again, welcome everybody. Great, no, that's working. Perfect. So as this is a competition, and as we are online, uh, I want to start with some ground rules first to kind of have an, um, to make it fair for us and also enjoyable. So first of all, if you can, please join from, uh, join from a computer or uh, should be a PC or laptop, if possible, with a stable internet connection, basically meaning it makes it easier for you to participate in our activities. Again, if possible, we do also understand if you're traveling, if you're at university, um, if you're if it's not feasible for you, you can of course also join from your phone. Um, it's better if you join from your phone than missing our sessions entirely. Uh, for Zoom, please, this is something that we we added right now. Please add your names to the um, add your full name to the participation in the participation list. It makes it easier for us to um, cross you off that you attended the session. And it would be bad if you attended and then don't get the points for it because we don't know that you were there. This also um, goes for, because I just see Saga, you're three people in one room. Um, if you're joining from one shared PC, please add all your names. I mean, now I see that you're there. So I can, um, when I take a screenshot, I see that you, all of you were there but it is helpful for us or it would make it easier for us if you put all your names that share one PC so then when I go through the list um, that I have all the names and I don't miss anybody in, in checking that you're there. Um, the next thing is that please keep yourself muted throughout the whole competition or the whole session, unless of course you're talking, then please do unmute yourself because then we want to hear you but this is just to prevent um, any background noises or interruptions. Keep your camera on, that is not another point. Uh, if possible, of course, keep your camera on as much as possible. It is, although we're just online, it's more enjoyable, I think, to when you talk to somebody that you at least see them and you're just not talking to a black box. And we all kind of want to know well, what everybody looks like. That's the idea behind it. Uh, use a headset. This one is rather how you prefer it. Either use a headset or if you have a webcam with an inbuilt uh, microphone like I do, uh, whatever you like better, just make sure that the quality is good and we can hear you when you talk. It would be sad if you talk to us and then we, we can't really hear you and understand what you're saying. And the last, but definitely not least part is stay focused and participate. And I know for some of you, it is very early in the morning. And for some of you, it is quite the opposite, very late in the evening. We do know that, we do apologize that for it, but as you will see in a second, we have teams from quite literally around the world uh, with a time zone difference of 14 hours it is hard to find one time slot that fits everybody. Um, fortunately, some of the teams already, uh, at least the Mexican team, I can move forward to see. So that is also the list of the teams we have. And as you see, Philippines on the one end, Mexico on the other end. Yeah, there is just a big time difference. Um, so we had to choose the two o'clock Central European time. So for the Mexican team, it's seven in the morning. For the others, it's for the Philippines, I think it's nine in the evening. We apologize. But still, um, try to stay focused to come back to that uh, to that part. It, our sessions only take 
roughly one and a half hours. I know we set it up for two hours, but we will probably be finished in one and a half hours. And for this time, for this one and a half hours, I think that we can be um, emails, be emails, news alerts, and social media notifications. Just let them be. Let's focus on for one and a half hours on the competition and, and do it together. I think we can manage that. Um, yeah, now I, I jumped a bit ahead. So these are the teams. We have eight teams right, uh, with us right now. On the right side, you have the you can see the advisory board. Uh, some of them, men as mentioned, are here. Um, I saw Catherine for her. Uh, Christina is also here. Um, they're all based in Europe because as the uh, Iseki Food Association is based in Europe and the project that is uh, sponsoring the competition, the Fairchain project is also in Europe. That's why the advisory board is also in Europe and they are based on Europe and they come from academia, nonprofit organizations and industry. If I'm correct, Catherine, just shake your head. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, just giving you a quick overlook uh, of what to expect for today's session. So the first part will be roughly half an hour, I guess, will be the history and the aim of the competition. Just give you uh, an idea of what the competition is about. Afterwards, we will have our first group work session. There we will um, prepare some breakout rooms. That's also why we, if it's preferable for you to join from your PC or laptop, it makes it easier for you to to interact with the breakout rooms. Um, then we have the requirements evaluation. So it's basically uh, more administrative stuff we we're talking about, the evaluation, how your teams are going to score, get the points and ultimately win the competition. And also talking about some of the, what you can expect for the upcoming, upcoming sessions that we have together. And at the end, before we finish, we will leave the floor to you if you have any questions or, or comments, really. All right. So the Food Factory Fuss uh, competition started back in 2017 when our colleague, Paula Petia, had the idea to create this. Uh, she's a professor at the University of Teramo, I should add. Um, she had this idea to, to start this international student competition that focuses on solving a real uh, problem that is present in the in the food industry. And you can see some of the, the themes on, on screen right now. You have the shelf life, food energy and water loss, and healthy beverages. So that was the start. And it started as, as part of the food stock project. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the topic of our session, of our competition, is upscale or downscale a food supply chain to a national or regional level. So it is very important that your project, your idea, uh, identifies a specific problem related to that topic, to upscale or downscale the, the food, uh, food chain, the food supply chain, and then presents a solution to that problem. And here, I want to insert this one here. Uh, it is um, is imperative, and I want to to really focus on that. Is that the solution that you will present that your project is about should be sustainable and address at least one of the following? So please remember that: technical issues within the uh, supply chain, marketing, policy, business models, consumer producer relations or social challenges. So please keep that in mind. Uh, we will have um, multiple online trainings. I think it's five in total, this one being the first, and we will help you develop your project. But at the end of the final conference, when you present your project, please keep in mind or make sure that your project um, gives a solution to the problem containing it should be sustainable and address one of the following. All right, just give that away, away for a second. Um, yeah, we have this online trainings. And then, uh, as I said, at the final conference, you will present your project and the winner will be um, announced. And how we get there, how the winning team will be determined, I will talk about that after our group work session. I'm going to uh, into that more detail then. 
uh, yeah, the winning team will be chosen by the advisory board. And also what we have here is that the project is since 2022 part of the Fairchild project. In 2020, I think it got to the next foot. Was it 2020? I think 2019, 2020, something like that. Um, so we had, uh, just to quickly recap, it began in 2017. In 2020, it was part of the Next Food project, and now it is part of the Fairchild project. And with the Next Food project uh, came the introduction of the five core competences. And this is now where Catherine will tell us more about what those five core competences are. And I will leave the floor to you. Thanks, Christoph. And hello and welcome to everyone. So let's see, am I sharing the right thing? How does that look? Yep, looks good. Okay, so you see here the core competences with red stars next to them. And they are observation, reflection, dialogue, participation, and visioning. So these competences are not about food chain. They're not about any particular career path. They're about being a successful career person. And I think you'll maybe find, like I did, they're also about being a successful person in other aspects of your life. So that's why we call them the core competences. Uh, but you can see also in this diagram that, that by using these core competences, we can really interact between teachers and students, advisors and stakeholders, and we can bring academia and reality, you know, closer together. We can link what's happening in the university with what's happening in the society. So this idea of core competences um, and training them is part of the action learning model, which was developed in the Next Food Project. And this action learning model wants to transform the way we learn instead of learning in this old way where I talk and you listen and I give you my knowledge, we want to try and learn in a different way where we put these five core competences into action in all of our sessions and we learn together. So that means you learn from me and I learn from you and you learn from each other. And that's what we're going to try and do in these next months. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge to do action learning, especially when we're online, uh, because it's focused on participation. So we really have to participate. It's a little harder when we're not in the same room and we're sharing with people from different cultures who have different experiences, who have different levels of English. But we really learn how to work together. And I hope you find that. And then I have that little blue box because I want to remind you that we, that's the uh, Iseki team, we're doing research on you. You know, we keep a lot of data on all these competitions. Um, and we find that people like them in general, and also that they, the students who participate find that they improve in these competences by participating. So you might find that and you might not. But we want your honest answers about how you view your own skills. And you'll see later some of the things we ask you to fill out to tell us that. So please be honest to help our research. So here's uh, one of the competences. I'm going to go briefly through them. And this competence is dialogue. And here's what dialogue is. We share, we build on each other. Dialogue is not debate. We're not trying to win. We're not trying to convince someone. We're getting a deeper understanding. We're listening to different viewpoints. We may not agree. We may agree. That's a side. We're not debating. But we're also not discussing in a dialogue. That's an interesting difference because discussing is more I give my opinion, you give your opinion. And in dialogue, we really have a different level of openness where we're looking at why we think the way we do and saying, hmm, you know, we're open to our opinion and we're ready to be curious and, ex and really hear what other people say. 
So it's nice to remember that dialogue is somewhere between discussion and debate, and we're going to aim to dialogue with our students in this competition. Reflection is another one of the five core competences, and this is one that I think in modern society we don't do much of at all. It takes really a moment to slow down and look at ourselves, look at what we just did, what, what just happened in this one and a half hour course. Think about it for a minute in silence. Yeah, that like 10 seconds of silence, you know, it's scary. So we're going to take time where we have two and three minutes of silence. And we reflect on what someone just said or something we just talked about or a presentation that we had in a session. And when we reflect like this, we can really gain some insight, you know, take, really take the time to think about what happened and think about how it links to who we are. And then think about how we can move forward with what just happened. So these are the three questions that we think about in a reflection session, what, what exactly happened? You know, what did I feel about it? What does it mean to me? And then what did I learn from it? How can I move forward with this? And when there's a full, you know, semester long course on uh, using action learning, we ask students to keep a reflection log. And reflection logs can be as complicated or as simple as, as you might want them to be. And here's a kind of complicated one. You could put pictures in it. You can write uh, a, a lot about what happened. You can try and really observe what happened. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, or your reflection log can be very simple, like the one we're going to ask you to keep in this course, where you just answer these three questions. What exactly happened? What do I think about it or feel about it? How did it make me feel? And then what did I learn from it? And you'll see at the end of the session in our, on our website, you'll have a link to a page with these three questions. Now, we don't judge you on this. You're not required to hand it in. We're not going to read it. We don't, I don't think we even want you to hand it in. Um, but we just suggest it for you to do and think that you'll really find it helpful. And in some of our sessions, we'll do a more serious reflection. But this is for you to do on your own. Okay, and then we have a competence called observation. And observation is about really looking at something before we make a judgment about it. Really noticing like as if we were a camera, what exactly am I seeing? You know, what exactly is happening and trying to take away our interpretation? So we're gonna do a little exercise on observation right now. And we're going to look at this painting. And let's see, I think I can show a nicer view of this painting. Let me see if I could do that. Yeah, so we can see it not nicer here. So we're going to look at this painting for a couple of minutes, two minutes silent observation. We're going to look at this painting. And then, and I want you to take some notes. What do you see? Not what do you interpret, but what do you see? And then we'll have four minutes and we'll talk about uh, what people see. Okay, so let me go back to the painting, nice and big and pretty. Uh, if I can, let's see. Yep, there it is. Christoph, you're going to time two minutes for us? and we'll have our first silence. Two minutes are over. Okay, two minutes is long, right, to be in silence. So what do you see? Let me make people big. Uh, you can just open your mic and talk if you want. But otherwise, I'm going to pick on somebody. Somebody from the Swedish team? So I see a sad 
woman who have been waiting for her men uh, for several hours and her bum hurts even if uh, you have uh, sent some flowers she's still upset or disappointed at him she has a wooden taste in her behind mm -hmm. as you say in Swedish. okay how about someone from the UK team? What do you see? Well, maybe we don't have the UK team uh, here. And so yeah. you can see there's, um, there's a lady on the bench that looks like there's some flowers, flowers next to her. Um, and there's a man leaning over, it looks like there's some trees in the background. Um, and it looks like there's some flowers. There's a lady with an umbrella. And it looks like there's a house in the background as well. Okay. How about someone else? Anybody want to, anybody have a different thing to say about what they see? Amna, you want to try? Yep. Uh, I think there is a slight waste uh, on the bench near the lady. So this gives the idea stop food waste as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harris, you want to try? Hi. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are. Ma'am, I, I think um, uh, he wants to impress uh, his wife, annoying wife, by giving uh, them and uh, putting in flowers in front of them, in front of her. And uh, his uh, uh, mother-in-law uh, 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 is seeing her. Okay. Okay. Maybe one more person. Thank you. Thanks, Harris. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. Do we have the Mexican Dulce? Are you here? Yes. Hello. What do you, What do you see, Dulce? I see like she looks like a little um sad <laughs> but the man he looks like um impressed with the woman maybe he's an admirer here I don't know but um, that's it and and the same to the other members of things Okay, well, you all told interesting stories, but honestly, none of you told me what you see, what's there, as if you were a machine. What's there? There are three people, one woman sitting on a bench, one woman standing in the background. The sky is blue. There are flowers. The woman is not smiling. You see, I don't know if she's sad or she's angry. I don't even know if it's springtime. Maybe they're in a place where there are always flowers, like in the Caribbean, and it's not springtime or summertime. The man is leaning on the bench. I don't know why. I can't interpret. I'm interpreting. I'm not observing when I start to say the woman is sad. The man offered her flowers. Maybe she offered him flowers. I could say something about the way they're dressed. The woman is wearing a long skirt. Typical of the 1800s, the 1880s. See, now I'm observing. I could say there's a signature in the bottom left corner. This is a painting by Claude Monet. Right? This is observing the details. I could say the sun is shining. I see shadows on the ground, right? But I can't say, I, I can interpret also, that's great, but that's a different thing than observing, right? Observing is just what exactly do I see? And I, I think you'll find that it's useful to do that before you interpret, you know? Really try not to interpret and just look at what you see. And then afterwards, okay, now this is all, everything I see. Now I'm going to 
think about what does this mean? Well, what could this mean? So that's always interesting. And I'll tell you, in the years we've been doing this, whoops, people are always happy to interpret, <laughs> as all of you are. So we can think about in the future and when you do your reflection to what exactly happened, what exactly did I do? And then later, how did I feel about it? What do I think it means? Another of the five core competences is participation. And participation, I think, is what you just did. It's about really being there, you know, not only physically, but really being dedicated, you know, trying to make a difference to the group, you know, give your idea to really be connected with what's happening, not just getting through it. So we're going to try and encourage you to really participate. And then I think this is the last of the core competences, and it's visioning. And visioning is an interesting exercise that, that I think is one that most of us also do not do. <clears throat> and visioning is a really specific way of looking ahead into the future, creating an, a, an image in your mind that's really vivid of what you want to be in the future future, and then having your road plan, your map of how to get there. And I'm not a professional athlete, but I'm a serious athlete. <clears throat> and I know that professional athletes use visioning regularly. Did you ever watch figure skating? <clears throat> I know that figure skaters, when they're training, do visioning where you close your eyes, they close their eyes, and they imagine themselves doing their skating routine. They do it in their mind and imagine themselves doing it perfectly and winning, you know, the Olympic gold. And I know in other sports, in martial arts, also people use visioning. Imagine the sparring match. Imagine yourself specifically defending against attacks. Imagine yourself making contact. So this kind of visioning can really train your brain, you know, for success. You, you, you can try it at any time, but we will also do a guided visioning in this, uh, in this competition. And I think um, you'll really appreciate how this kind of exercise can be used in your, in your life to really understand what you want and then see what are the steps to get there. And moving now. There before you, you yeah. yeah, before you end your sharing, then let's just leave it at the slide. Because okay. then no no the, the breakout group, because no. you okay. don't have to end sharing. I start sharing just for sharing one okay. slide. Yeah. It's easier. So we uh, have the five competences and we're going to kind of put them aside now, right? Although I guess we'll use participation now when we make these breakout groups. Definitely dialogue. Right? And dialogue, definitely dialogue. Yeah. yeah. Definitely dialogue, right? When you're in these groups, we want you to really listen to what your fellow students are saying. You know, a lot of times we we don't dialogue. We're already thinking of our answer. You know, I think that, that one is the, the is hardest talking. part. Yeah, that is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to, every time we talk about those five core competences, to remind myself that dialogue means just listening without mm -hmm. formulating an answer, just listening. And when the other person is done, then start formulating your answer. Mm -hmm. We always, or I also, also tend to forget that when I'm in a dialogue and it's like, no, I know that. I know that this happened to me as well. It's like, no, the other person is talking don't okay I see. wait christoph a hand up from the swedish group oh yeah should we divide us or can we be in the same group yeah um <laughs> while catherine was talking i was looking at how to do the breakout rooms right now um it would of course be optimally if you could divide um yeah, yeah. 
because for the for the breaker group, basically how it works is that we somewhat randomly put you in different breakout rooms. So you will not be with your team because this exercise is not, should not be done within the teams. It's, um, oh yeah, I see, cool. Uh, so we have different groups. It's also just for this activity. So don't be afraid for the rest of the competition, you stay within your teams, but just for this activity alone, we separate you into different breakout groups. It will be somewhat random, as I said, and uh, the you have 25 minutes within those groups to search for or to discuss an example of a food chain uh, that was successfully upscaled or downscaled to regional or national level. Maybe some of you already know of an example, then you can share with your fellow teammates or group mates in that, in that regard. If you don't know, then please, the... What's it called? Uh, Google is your oyster. The World Wide Web is your oyster. Search for an example together and uh, decide on one example that you like most. Um, because the one the one favorite example we want from you is also we need the contact details if you can find them. Because after today's session, please each group, again, it's not the, uh, Harris, I, I saw you your hand. I will come to you in a second. Um, for today is within the breakout groups, look for the example, write down the contact details and send it to us afterwards, after today's session, because our intention is then to contact those people and invite them to the third session we have, the virtual visit. Uh, so if you want to know more about, that's also the reason why we ask you to look for something that you would like to know more about because we are then going to try to invite them, try to get them to participate so they can present their, their example and we as a group or you then can ask them questions. So to recap, you have 25 minutes in random groups. Look for an example of a uh, food chain that was successfully upscaled or downscaled. You decide on, you choose one person in each group that will be rapporteur and that person after those 25 minutes, when we come back into the plenary, then gives us the a one minute presentation about that example. It does not have to be a uh, an elaborate presentation. I mean, like uh, you don't need to prepare any PowerPoint slides. And if you want to, that's totally up to you and that's totally fine. But it's also just okay if some uh, some of you, one person per group, just opens their mic and tells us uh, for a minute about that example. Iris, I haven't forgotten you, please. Sure. So about half the teams sound like they have someone. About half the teams sound like they still need to find someone. And I encourage you, all of the teams, to exchange contact information so that you can be sure that your team sent us something on time. And then you all get credit for this assignment. For the teams who are looking for someone, it doesn't have to be someone that you know. You can look on Google, you can find a research paper, you know, of someone who wrote an article about scaling up or scaling down, you know, a large supermarket chain that scaled down. You can find someone that you don't know, but that you admire because you read something about them. And then you have an easy email. And you'll hear a little more about how to give this in, um, in a couple of minutes from Luminita. But now I'll hand it over to Christoph and he'll tell you all the details about how the winning team is chosen. Thank Go ahead, you. Christoph. Great. So thank you for all the, the inputs, as Catherine just said. And I know we already have, we're roughly 90 minutes, so we're trying to not make it too last too long. But coming to the um, administrative stuff, or that the fun part is now over, and uh, now we have to talk business. Just kidding. Um, how are how do we decide or how do we determine uh, which team will at the end? This is what this is about. How does your team win the competition? We will evaluate each team on those three points, those three columns, let's call them, that you see on screen right now. You can also find them on our homepage. They have been there since the call was open, I think. Uh, but just to, to remind you, 
the first column that determines your final score, and this is 40% um, of your final score, is the quality of your project. So the relationship between the problem identified and the strategy developed, uh, the innovation and application to industry, the impact that it has. Again, I want to, to remind you that your solution has to be sustainable and has to address one of the, the aspects that I mentioned before. And as well, the overall clarity and quality of the written report that you hand in. So the green parts, the uh, everything that is written uh, or is marked in green, those are things that you hand in, that you actively hand in. And the quality of the, the project part is mainly based on the written report and the PowerPoint slides. The second part is the oral presentation. That's again, that's uh, it's a major column. It's again, 40% of your final score. And this revolves mainly about the final presentation or the presentation that you give at the final conference. So you have, again, the, the PowerPoint slides that you will hand in. You will score points on them. You will also score points on the one minute summary, the elevator pitch. You already now have an experience in how long or a rather short a minute is if you want to talk about something and you want to get as much information out there as possible. Um, we will talk about the elevator pitch in the last session, if I'm correct, in the soft skills one. So we will go over it, of course, but you will be scored on that. You will be um, also the, the presentation itself during the final conference. And then as a team afterwards, because you will have 10 minutes, I think, for the final presentation during the conference. And afterwards, so one minute um, elevator pitch, 10 minutes, uh, or is the one minute uh, part of the 10 minutes? I don't remember. We will go over this uh, later um, anyways. But you will also have to be able to answer questions from the audience after your presentation. And this also factors in into your score. And last but not least, it's, um, it's only 20% of your final score, but it also can um, help you score points if you do it. So you have the uh, learner evaluation at the beginning and at the end. This is also important for if you want to have a certificate for participating to uh, in our competition, you have to finish the evaluation, the learner evaluation, both at the beginning and at the end. And you will only receive your certificate if you do both. That is important. So you get points for that, but you also get points for attending our online trainings. We do understand that if it collides with any other assignments you have and you can't uh, participate, it's fine. You don't have to tell us. You don't have to, to send an excuse why or um, why you couldn't participate. But just so you know, is that the more members of your team attend those meetings, the more points you will uh, get at the end. But if you then ask me like, but we have we are only three members in the team and the others are five, so they then would get more points than no. We average all scores so that it is fair towards all teams. At the end, all your scores will be averaged, they will be compared, and the team with the highest score will win the, uh, the competition. I think that's fair, right? Great. That's how we evaluate. You will, we, are, we will upload this, uh, the presentation to our homepage, so you can uh, go back and reread it again. It is, again, as I said, it is also on our homepage under the project evaluation tab, I do think. But it is on the homepage. You will find it, and we will also upload it to the online trainings. And now, uh, Luminita will talk about, for the last minutes, uh, about what we are going to do in the next sessions. Yes. Thank you very much, Christoph. I go now to the assignments. So um, I got the ugly part of the online training of today <laughs> because I have to uh, tell you what assignments you need to fill during this competition. And the first one is the one that we have already heard many times during the, the activity you have done. So we will ask you um, to send the topic from the group discussions of today. 
of a successful example of upscaling or downscaling of a supply chain together with the contact details of the person. So you just need to give us the contact details and we will contact that person. You don't need to contact the, the people. You see the um, email address on the slides where you have to send the um, email. So please do it um, if possible after the meeting today, but if not, um, latest until Monday, uh, 26th of uh, February. And these topics will be discussed during the virtual visit training, which will be uh, held online on uh, 20th of March. And as Christoph said also um, earlier, so um, we will discuss these topics there. Um, we or the advisory boards, we contact these people or we find people which are dealing with these um, topics and we will invite them to the um, uh, training. Um, before the webinar, we will send you the agenda and the um, name of the experts which will be present in order to encourage um, the interactions between you, between you as a student and the experts of the topics you have uh, suggested. So this is the first assignment. The second one uh, on the next slide uh, is to complete the learner evaluation begin form. And this is due by Tuesday, the 27th of uh, February at midnight. And this is a mandatory assignment and counts towards your team's evaluation. The answers do not, but each member of your team needs to complete this survey. It only takes 10 minutes, not more. And you will find it on the website. It will be active uh, when this meeting will uh, finish. Another survey, it's the reflection document. This one is not mandatory. However, we will really appreciate your contribution. And as Catherine said, we are doing action research on you. So your honesty is crucial in this case. So please take the time. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes to fill also this reflection document. Then we go to the next assignment which is the short presentation for the student presentation training. This will take uh, place um, online on March uh, 8th. And in this training session, one member of each team should hold the presentation of maximum five minutes about the practical experience related to a successful example of upscaling or downscaling a food supply chain. You will find the introduction also on the web page. And um, I will suggest for you to follow and to look um, always on the website because there you will uh, always find the updates, the important dates, uh, dates and all the documents that uh, you need. And also another reminder, please not forget to send us the one slide to introduce your team and your project, um, which was included in the last email that you got from us. And we aim to use this for publicity. So we will post on social media and so on. So please do not forget to send this uh, one slide as soon as possible. And the next assignment and the last one, I will stop, <laughs> uh, will be to pick up a 30 minute slot for project review session. Um, this session will be scheduled uh, on the week uh, of 25th of March until 5th of April. And it will last 15 to 30 minutes for each of the team. Um, this is a, a private meeting of each team with the competition organizers in order to review progress or to pose questions and to clarify all aspects you, uh, you want. Um, we will upload soon a document, a Doodle document, where you can pick up your favorite time slot. And what's important is uh, that at this session, you need to have the first draft of the project idea um, you um, want to present. So these are the assignments. And now if we go to the next slide, uh, we have just a short overview of the online trainings that you need to attend. The first one, the one of today, it's almost finished. So activity checked and four others will uh, follow. And as I said, please follow the website because you will find all the dates um, updated there. And 
the last and the most important uh, event will be the final conference. Um, so you can move to the next slide, Christoph, because I will ask you to save the date for the final conference, which is the April 23. Uh, but I think uh, the most important deadline for you is um, 15 of April, because then you need to submit your project presentation and report. Once you have done that, then one week later we meet at the final conference, the winning team will be announced and it will be awarded with 300 euros um, sponsored by Seki Food Association. Uh, each member of the winning team will receive a winning certificate, but do not worry. Uh, if you have accomplished all the trainings and assignments, you will be also awarded with the particip participation certificate. And this was all from my side. And I think we are at the end of the training and at the end of the presentation. And now it's the time for questions and answers.